So since we are all gathered here tonight to celebrate books, I decided to start off with a book poem. I'm going to get into the horror and violence later, but we'll start you off with something nice. This is called Gifted Text. I could expound upon the nature of books and how precious their value can be, but really any writer or reader can tell you that. So instead, I could impart the wisdom of knowing someone by the books on their bookshelf and how the gift of a book with that knowing builds untold emotional connections. When someone gifts a book to you, it embodies the way in which they understand you, how they saw your heart in that cover or blurb. The giver becomes a matchmaker, hoping to pair you for life with a specific tome of syllables. And it is for life because books are collected, jealously hoarded like treasure. The ones you love are hard to let go of. Which leads to my point, if I have a point that is, about gifts and books and things and stuff I could expound upon or wisdom I could impart. When someone gives you a special book, one from their own bookshelf, that is explosive. When someone loves something so much that they're compelled to give it away, and they choose you to give it to, as if to say, take this thing that I care about so deeply so that it might bring you as much joy as it has brought me. That is the deepest, rarest magic that books can conjure. I could go on about all of this, but I won't, unless I do, because I think maybe I just did, but I'm not sure, which says a lot about who I am, and if you saw the disarray on my bookshelf, you would understand. <laughs> okay, this is sort of a hard poem. <laughs> this is called Exorcism. After that supernatural thriller on Netflix, I should really have known better than to try to clean my fridge. I think all the ghosts in my house reside in the refrigerator. I can see the remnants of the poltergeist's untold havoc and destruction amid the jars and bottles of condiments in the door. Hear the raspy whispers echoing through ancient leftover containers, and sense those silent spirits that haunt the no man's land between the jellies and the salsa. But unlike any ghost hunter or paranormal investigator on TV, I have no EMF detectors, no night vision video cameras, no voice recorders to gather EVP. I have no blessed crosses or spells or magic crystals. I go in armed only with a dish rag and soapy water to exercise my demons and purge the evil from my home. <laughs> Actually, see this one because the text is kind of small. This is this is the more serious poem. This is my Halloween poem, like two years ago, maybe three years ago. This is called, and, and this has a violent content warning. This one is called "Tear You Open." <laughs> my love, I'd never tear you open. Gorge on tender breast, tongue lapping nectars like honey, red and soft delving muzzle deep inside the wound that was you, but now something different, something tasted. My love, I'd never gnaw your marrows, pounce upon you, pin you down, mouth embracing throat, hearing pulse hammer, ravaging flesh, guzzling all that you are, sating ravenous, aching hunger, leaving you gasping lifeless shell. My love, if ever you see the dangerous gleam, furrowed brow, run for home, safety behind locked doors to escape the jaws of malicious desire. Or look me in the eye, stare me down, transform me from the inside out, and we can run unfettered through moonlit trees as one. <laughs> 